Hi. Hello. Mm -hmm. We're on page 75 of the Proclaimer's book. In the first three chapters, or the rather, the first three pages of this chapter, chapter 7, advertise the king and the kingdom, been taken up with Rutherford in prison and some of the other directors of the organization. And there's an attempt here to make a hero out of Rutherford. And this yeah. continues, I think, in the next section. We've seen the general tenor of the last couple of chapters has been to imply that the brothers passed the test or one test after another and mm -hmm. no, no surprise then that this is entitled the test in Los Angeles they've just they've just gotten out of prison mm -hmm. and that's where they, we take up the story here now that brother Rutherford and the others were free the question arose what about the work of proclaiming God's kingdom during the time that these brothers were in prison, organizational oversight of the witnessing work had largely been shut down. The Brooklyn Tabernacle had been sold and the Bethel home closed. The headquarters offices in Pittsburgh were small and funds were limited. Besides, how much interest really was there in the kingdom message? From California, Brother Rutherford decided to arrange for a test. A meeting was arranged at Clunes Auditorium in Los Angeles on Sunday, May 4, 1919. The Hope for Distressed Humanity was the title of the lecture to which the public was invited. But the talk was to be given by J.F. Rutherford, a man who had just got out of prison. Through extensive newspaper advertising, Rutherford promised a candid presentation of the facts, including an explanation of the reasons for the illegal convictions of the Society's officers. Would anyone be interested enough to attend? The response was overwhelming. In fact, 3,500 turned out to hear the lecture, and about 600 others had to be turned away. Brother Rutherford was thrilled. He agreed to speak to the overflow crowd on Monday night, and 1,500 showed up. He was so ill, though, that he could not finish that lecture. After an hour, he had to be replaced by an associate. Nevertheless, the test in Los Angeles was a success. Brother Rutherford was convinced that there was considerable interest in the kingdom message, and he was determined to see it proclaimed. This just sounds weird to me. Well, it does, because he's not talking about the kingdom. He's talking about himself and their prison. So how is a message about explaining themselves to the public a test of anything? Yeah. So especially the kingdom message, when you realize, again, as we said in the last Mm -hmm. episode, uh, what are they talking about during this period? The new thing is the Millions Campaign, building up to 1925. The old thing, they're still distributing Russell's books, which are about the old chronology, mm -hmm. 1799, 1874, mm -hmm. 1914, etc. And then there's, of course, The Finished Mystery, which is the new book. Yeah. That's all been done already, and this is the kingdom message? Well, even today, when, when witnesses talk about kingdom preaching and at their assemblies too oftentimes the message is about themselves yeah that they're doing the work yeah that so, somehow they're unique so, the, so it, it it turns around so that it's not really about biblical things it's about yourself well that's, that's absolutely right the one thing that's continuous in their history of now more than five generations is everything is really about joining us hmm so here you're not surprised to see that the test is about what's who's still interested in Rutherford and his message. Yeah. It's really not about the, who's interested in the kingdom message. And there, yeah. there were dozens of books being printed during that very period. We have many of them here. Yeah. Dozens of books being printed about the kingdom by other Christians, and, especially yeah. in, by the way, California. From From what you read here, it's advertised as, I, I was imprisoned society's leaders were imprisoned and I'm going to talk about that mm. 
and that's what gains the audience, not not uh, a kingdom message. So the numbers seem to be the passing of the test, that there's sufficient people that we can get going again. Interesting, yeah. In our message. Yeah, or us. And then they've attached to it, and I thought this strange, they've attached to it a, a, a box length of the entire page 76 mm -hmm. about the House of the Princes. Now, if you know about the history of Beth Sarum, the House of the Princes, mm -hmm. you know it's mostly about a, a scandal that develops in the 1930s. Why is it stuck here? Yeah. Well, it, because it's, it's directly related to Rutherford, for one thing. Um, because he lived there, um, but they're they're trying to I think they're trying to make you first of all feel sorry for Rutherford, and they talk about him having one lung, you know, and and having to go uh, to warmer climates mm -hmm. for his health, and then they try and make it that this is this is why he had to live there, mm. and why this place was prepared that he used it. But that with another little twist in there too, though. <laughs> part of part of the twist, though, is in these paragraphs, right? Yeah. But part of it is not. So let's let's look at the stuff yeah. they say and from where they quote, and then so, then we'll yeah. look at the original. Now, if you have the book and you look on on page seventy six, right above the box, there's a picture of Beth Sarum, and just looking at it, you would think, "Wow, that looks like a really fancy hotel, or mansion." But they call it a house. Yeah. Okay. So, House of the Princess. This is what the box says. Brother Rutherford had a severe case of pneumonia after his release from unjust imprisonment in 1919. Afterward, he had only one good lung. In the 1920s, under a doctor's treatment, he went to San Diego, California, and the doctor urged him to spend as much time as possible there. From 1929 on, Brother Rutherford spent the winters working at a San Diego residence he had named Beth Sarum. Beth Sarum was built with funds that were a direct contribution for that purpose. The deed, which was published in full in the Golden Age of March 19, uh, 1930, conveyed this property to J.F. Rutherford and thereafter to the Watchtower Society. Concerning Beth Sarum, the book Salvation, published in 1939, explains, The Hebrew words Beth Sarum means house of the princess, and the purpose of acquiring that property and building the house was that there might be some tangible proof that there are those on earth today who fully believe God and Christ Jesus and in his kingdom, and who believe that the faithful men of old will soon be resurrected by the Lord, be back on earth, and take charge of the visible affairs of earth. End of quote. A few years after Brother Rutherford's death, the board of directors of the Watchtower Society decided to sell Beth Sarum. Why? The Watchtower of December 15, 1947, explained, it, has been, it had fully served its purpose and was now only serving as a monument, quite expensive to keep. Our faith in the return of the men of old, whom the King Christ Jesus will make princes in all the earth, not merely in California, is based not upon that house, Beth Sarum, but upon God's word of promise. And, and then they, they have a footnote of, based on the psalm that they're interpreting to get all this, right? Right. So the, the footnote says, this is a quote from a 1950 watchtower. At the time, it was believed that the faithful men of old times, such as Abraham, Joseph, and David, would be resurrected before the end of this system of things and would serve as princes in all the earth in fulfillment of Psalm 45, verse 16. This view was adjusted in 1950 when further study of the scriptures indicated that those earthly forefathers of Jesus Christ would be resurrected after Armageddon. Mm. 
For me, this is all a great example of what we said in our very first Proclaimers video, I guess about more than a year ago now. Mm -hmm. Namely, that it's a masterpiece of propaganda yeah. in, in its organization. For instance, I've already said that why is this piece about a 30th scandal stuck in 1919 now? Yeah. Well, moving it, moving it out of its chronological sequence gives you less idea of how it attaches to some other errors in Watchtower thinking. Mm -hmm. But it's very clever that they've put it here at all because they give you the impression that it was some kind of well, they say tangible proof. So a building that looks like a fancy hotel is a tangible proof that people have faith that yeah. these saints of old are going to come back any time. Yeah, now. I've never looked at mansions and thought that. Um, but, but I also think they explained that it was expensive to keep, so it must have been pretty expensive to build. And maintain. And to maintain and to house Rutherford all those years. So they they have him living there and saying he's waiting for the for you know the faithful old man to somehow be resurrected and transplanted into California any day now any day now well this is you know if we heard this from anybody else we would think this is just a scam to live in a nice big fancy house because after 1925 this idea that the saints are going to appear any time was still kept up but mm -hmm. the 1925 date finally receded yeah so you have a scandal that really was starting to get going after yeah. the after the millions campaign failed and ran right up until 1939 when they produced the book that's yeah. been quoted here so if a preacher said what rutherford <laughs> said and then you saw their property like some prosperity gospel guys have these huge properties. People don't think, oh, well, these are such faithful men. They think this is a scam. This is this is uh, an endeavor to kind of cover yourself and say that God is, is blessing you. Right, and the fact that they delayed explaining themselves for... 10 over, years. For about 10 years. So here's, yeah. here's the original page, in page 311 of the book Salvation, published by Rutherford in 1939. So one of his last books, mm -hmm. why is it, why have they waited so long to justify this? So after the part they've quoted, mm -hmm. where it says that this was to be some tangible proof that there are those on earth who fully believe God and Christ Jesus and his kingdom, there's the kingdom back in again. What's this got to do with the kingdom message, you might ask yeah. at this point. Yeah. They go on to say this, the title to Beth Serim is vested in the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in trust to be used by the president of the society and his assistants for the present and thereafter to be forever at the disposal, notice that, forever at the disposal of the aforementioned princes on the, on the earth. To be sure, everything then on the earth will belong to the Lord. Neither the Lord nor the princes need others to others to build houses for them. <laughs> but but, but anyway. it was thought well, and it was thought by whom you ask. It was thought well and pleasing to God at, that the aforementioned house be built as a testimony to the name of Jehovah. Yeah. So, like Jacob in the book of Genesis, they have attached the name of Jehovah to this Excuse monument to false prophecy. Yeah. And they, uh, they go on, though. Hang on, just, just one okay. more paragraph, if you can... Uh, Bear it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> to a testimony to the name of Jehovah and showing faith in his announced purposes. His announced purposes? Who announced them? The house has served as a testimony to many persons throughout the earth, and while the unbelievers have mocked concerning it and spoken contemptuously of it, yet it stands there as a testimony to Jehovah's name. And if and when the princes do return, and some of them occupy the property, such will be a confirmation of the faith and hope that induced the building of Beth Sarah. I think it's interesting they say if in there. But, you know, this, is, this did not turn out to be something that praised God. And they sold it, I think, to, to get rid of this scandal. It, it ended up being a scandal to God's name, not... Mm not something that honored his name. Also, this explanation in the footnote that they, you know, discovered that these guys are not coming back until after Armageddon 
what difference does that make to to the reason they've built this place? Because they've been saying forever that Armageddon is it's ha- going to happen any minute. They've That's been right. saying this for decades. So this becomes smoke and mirrors too. Yeah. Now you've made the it is. You use the expression in your personal videos that you began to see when you did your own research 25 no 35 years ago that the watchtower had been and for a long time had been a fudge factory they were yeah. used to fudging their own history yeah we've also also used the analogy of smoke and mirrors mm-hmm. all of this the the way they've treated this here in the proclaimers book is smoke and mirrors more yeah. fudge coming from the factory all to the end of somehow making it a noble purpose yeah. attaching but here in the book in the cover, part they've in the part they the have shame. the part they have just left out mm-hmm. it's plain that they've attached the name Jehovah to this project which means they've attached the name Jehovah to false prophecy yeah. the world they allude to has mocked at this and mm-hmm. i would say rightly so mm-hmm. what's this mansion got to do with honoring god yeah yeah to the world it's very obvious that you are scamming yeah so that's so th- page 311, by the way, in the Salvation Book, if you can yeah. get your hands on a copy. We're linking a video of f- uh, Fred Franz on how God shames self, uh, self-assuming self false prophets by not fulfilling their predictions. This was just before 1975 he wrote this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, speaking out of both sides of your mouth all the time. The watchtower. Mm-hmm. Amen. See you soon.